Around the world, digital transformation is constantly growing within companies. Business environments are constantly driven by connectivity, artificial intelligence, and automation. There is a lot of buzz going on about mobile and web automation testing as well. Hello everyone. This is Archana from Edureka and in today's session we are going to learn about APM Studio, a popular tool used for mobile and web automation testing. But before we proceed, let's take a look at the topics which we will be talking about in this session. So we will start this session by discussing what is software testing and why is software testing very important. Then we will take a look at mobile test automation and different type of tools that are available for mobile testing. Then we will move on to our today's topic, which is APM Studio. We will discuss about what it is and its prominent features. Then I'll show you how to install APM Studio. Finally, we'll end this session by performing a demo where we will learn how mobile testing is done using APM Studio. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. Software testing basically is the process of executing the software or any kind of application to find out if there are any bugs or any kind of errors in it. As the name already suggests, software testing means checking the developed software for any kind of mistakes or problems in the initial design of software itself. I hope you are aware that every system has software bugs, right? It's impossible to design and bring out a perfect software product. Fundamentally, the world itself is imprecise and unpredictable, and all software systems connect to the real world in one or the other way. Some of these bugs may lie dormant, some others may occasionally arise and disappear without any serious consequences, while some others, when they become active, cause disasters. It's the last of these that deserves our attention. They can be expensive, they cost companies billions of dollars in repairs, lawsuits, and lost sales. And history is full of such examples. Let's take a look at few of them. On April 26, 1994, aircraft named Airbus A300 was completing a routine flight when just before landing at airport crashed due to some software bug. This crash killed about 264 people. And to date, the accident remains the deadliest accident in the history of China Airlines. As you can see, this crash was due to software bug. Similarly, in April of 1999, a software bug caused failure of $12 billion military satellite launch. The problem in the satellite's guidance system was caused by a programming error by a human. In the same way, on August 14, 2003, shortly after 2 p.m., a high voltage power line in northern Ohio brushed against some overgrown trees and shut down completely. 50 million people lost power for up to two days in the biggest blackout in northern American history. Normally, the problem would have tripped an alarm in the control room, but due to software issues, the alarm system failed and people didn't have power for about two days. In 1985, Canada's Terak 25 radiation therapy machine malfunctioned due to software bug and delivered lethal radiation to patients, leaving three people dead and critically injuring three others. These are just few examples. There are many other fatal incidents that occur due to lack of software testing. So software testing gives confidence in the quality of final product. It confirms that application has no errors in the code. It verifies how the user can work with the application and ensures that the end product is very easy to use and safe as well. It confirms that application is able to operate in all required conditions and on all supported operating systems and web browsers correctly and safely. So this is why software testing is very important. So now that you know why software testing is important, you should know that software testing provides development teams with different ways and tools to determine the quality of their software. Now there are tons of software testing tools available these days. Let's take a look at selection of popular and well-known software testing tools in various categories here. So first of all, we have automation testing. It helps teams efficiently run a large number of tests in short period of time. We have popular tools which are used for automation testing like Selenium, which I'm sure you heard of. Then there is Ranorex, Catloon Studio, and many others. Then we have agile testing tools. These agile testing tools benefit testers and developers who work on agile products. 
you have popular tools such as Jira, you have SOAP UI and many others. There are various tools and online resources to help testers build tests for your mobile devices, record and run automated UI and unit tests for different kind of mobile applications and code libraries. And one of them is APM Studio. You have API, you have C test, test complete, Calabash and many others. Similarly, you also have tools to actually test and verify the performance of services under load. So basically we call them load testing tools. We have Apache Jmeter, which is very popular. Then there is WAPT, NeoLoad and many others. Well, these are very few categories. There are other categories as well, like management and you have many other categories. But as for today's session, we are mainly concentrating on mobile and web automation testing tools. So let's get started with next part of session, which is mobile automation testing or web automation testing. Digital transformation has changed the way businesses interact with their customers and this relationship is constantly evolving. The main ways customer and businesses interact these days is by using web and mobile applications. From shopping to banking to investment management and trip planning, Customers expect to be able to complete all of these tasks from their mobile phones sitting at one place. Because of this very reason, businesses all around the world are releasing applications at ever growing pace. But nothing is static. As quickly as these new applications are released, new technology changes the digital view of these applications. New hardware, new devices, smartwatches, new operating systems and updates are released sometimes as quickly as every two weeks. So all of these factors serve to make application development and testing much more complex. First of all, all enterprise applications have millions of users. Their needs and demands must be met quickly and reliably. Releasing, maintaining and updating an enterprise app is what defines one company from another. If an enterprise app does not function properly, it will have poor ratings, poor reviews and people will stop downloading it. This requires significant testing on a multitude of devices and operating system versions. Lastly, enterprises need secure environments. Protecting enterprises assets against cyber attacks or any kind of security breach is very important, right? That means an enterprise testing environment must be as secure as the rest of their internal systems. So in order to combat these network threats, enterprise build expensive virtual private networks or what we know as VPNs and network protections to ensure that their networks and systems are secure from the attacks. So this is where mobile automation testing comes into picture. Mobile automation testing makes all these goals possible for companies. Well, there are many mobile automation testing tools in the market and one of the most popular one is APM. APM was initially released in 2040 and now it has become one of the most popular framework for mobile test automation. APM is an open source tool for automating native mobile web and hybrid applications on iOS mobile, Android mobile and Windows desktop platforms. But before we proceed any further, let's quickly go through what these native apps, mobile web and hybrid apps mean. First of all, native apps. The majority of apps on your smartphone are native applications and they are built in a specific programming language for the specific device platform, which is either iOS or Android. For example, you have LinkedIn, Instagram, Google Maps, Pokemon Go and many others. Then mobile apps are web applications accessed using mobile browser. Example Facebook, Gmail, Google Docs and many others. And finally, a hybrid app in a way is a compromise between web and native app development. For example, you have Amazon, Netflix, Flipkart and many others. So going back to APM, it is an open source software. It's free and it is supported by highly active community of developers and experts all over the world. APM works across multiple platforms and in different scripting languages, which makes it uniquely versatile. And one of its most popular feature is APM is based on popular Selenium web driver. So using APM is very easy if you have prior experience of using Selenium. APM's contributors have designed the software for mobile only and are focused on providing the best mobile testing experience. But like I said earlier, no software is perfect and APM has its issues as well. The first challenge developers and testers come across is its complex setup. 
Scaling up is also a challenge because adding hardware options requires a huge number of server machines, which is literally difficult in APM. Second, it does not support parallel execution. Tests can only be executed one at a time. If you want to generate test reports, you will need to add a third party reporting system. APM's open source solution does not come with a reporting system. Then APM cannot test outside of an iOS app, meaning if some of your applications functionalities involves an integration with system apps or third party applications or mobile device sensors, setting up this in APM becomes very complex and sometimes it's not possible as well. For example, integrating with device camera, checking scanning, integrating with GPS for location based features. All these are very difficult in APM. Then the test development environment is also very complex. It is entirely code based. No user interface, no device reflection or object spy are available in order to make object identification a simpler process. Don't worry about what object spy or device reflection is right now. You'll understand it as we proceed. Lastly, testers that use APM must set up a grid of devices and machines in order to execute their tests. As a result, application lifecycle management or ALM as we call it in simple terms can be extremely difficult. So these are some issues that you could come across when you are using APM for your mobile app testing. So as a solution, Experitest introduced APM Studio. APM Studio mitigates all these challenges with ease. It makes APM testing much better and smoother. It cuts the effort and cost of developing and executing an APM based mobile test automation program. It enables faster delivery of better quality mobile apps. So you have the definition on the screen. It is an IDE created by Experit Test defined for mobile test automation development and execution using APM or Selenium WebDriver API. So it is a commercial enhanced version of API for Android and iOS open source tool for large scale enterprise developments. In simple terms, it addresses the core challenges present in APM testing and helps organization release high quality mobile apps in less time. Now let's see how APM Studio actually achieves that. APM Studio's functionality is broken down into two main categories. The first is a visual test development tool that provides its users with features like test recorder, device reflection and object spy. Again, if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. You will get to know as we proceed in the session. Next is APM's execution engine, which is especially designed for mobile. This engine enables text execution, out of app testing and parallel execution. So these are the reasons why APM Studio is much preferred than APM though it's a fairly new software in mobile app automation testing. This combination of functionalities helps APM Studio address many of APM's limitations. Well, now let's take a look at few best features of APM Studio. First of all, APM Studio is available as a free download that you can install within very few minutes. You can start your testing right away. And the huge benefit is that you do not need to separate your testing machines based on operating system. You can run your iOS tests on a Windows machine and vice versa. APM Studio solves the scalability issue that we face while we're using APM as well. With APM Studio, projects can be scaled to include hundreds of devices and thousands of tests at the same time. Secondly, you can develop, that is, easily develop stable tests with XPath and Object Spy. You can develop tests using very easy to use and intuitive user interface and in fact view device reflection while testing. So actually you can see the device that you're testing. It's reflection on the screen when you're testing and it also offers powerful IDE integration for automation as well. And next it adds remote capabilities which are critical for offshore teams. Enterprise test developers are able to connect to digital assurance lab and test from anywhere at any time. So suppose if you have very less variety of software mobile applications on CTES cloud, you can get access to different type of software applications and different kind of new version of operating systems and mobile tools. So basically CTES cloud provides access to newly released devices and operating system versions, including operating systems beta versions as well. So you do not have to worry about the availability of devices to test on. This availability or ability to access cloud of mobile services in application testing is very crucial in saving time and cutting travel costs between testing terms. Moving on with APM Studio, you're not confined to testing on one device at a time. APM Studio allows for large scale parallel execution. 
it offers intelligent grid management like real time view of your all your executions dynamic test scheduling and many other features it also offers seamless integration with ci cd environment that's continuous integration and continuous development environment hands free automation from ci example jenkins bamboo hudson and many other features and finally apm studio includes a fully customizable reporting tool this way analyzing test results become much simpler using apm studio well these are some best features of apm studio which makes it much better over apm now you know how apm studio is designed to address all the challenges that you might encounter when you're using apm so now you know all about apm studio its features and the way it overcomes all the challenges that we encounter while using apm finally it's time to check out how to install and set it up so that you can get started with your mobile test automation so before we proceed apm studio is basically available in two models first of all there is apm studio just apm studio it's a desktop application it's a free downloadable tool which integrates with your existing test environment you can develop apm tests using real local devices connected to your computer via a usb cable so you can connect your mobile devices to it using a usb cable secondly there is apm studio for eclipse it's a free downloadable plugin for eclipse using which you can develop execute and debug apm tests on real mobile devices as well apart from eclipse apart from accessing real mobile devices you can even access the latest version of different kind of devices and different kind of operating systems from c test cloud for testing so these are the two different models as for today's session i'll show you how to perform mobile application testing using apm studio plugin for eclipse but before we proceed to that i'll show you how to install apm studio as well but we won't be performing any testing there now let's discuss step by step procedure on how to install and use apm studio before we actually jump into the demo part so first comes the installation like i said earlier you have two options you can either install apm studio desktop app or use it as a plugin if you are using eclipse already i'll show you how to do that later the tool comes with prepackaged with all required tools and dependencies so even on a clean machine you wouldn't need to install any other components the hassle of installing apm and related tools and maintaining version compatibility is completely avoided in apm studio secondly the visual interface or studio guides you as you work and provide immediate errors or feedback so that you understand what you did and you can identify errors immediately without any delay main areas in apm studio visual interface are device manager application manager command area device reflection object spy for now don't worry about them just remember them i'll show you each of these main areas in the demo part of the session so basically before you start connecting to your applications or mobile device you need to make sure that your apm studio is set up for performing testing next step is obviously connecting to your device so you can select a device whether local or remote immediately upon doing that it will open a fully controllable device reflection you can perform operations such as clicking on the screen to access systems and third party application use swipes and gestures and you can click software buttons such as home button back button and all that next step once you've connected your test device is installing your applications applications can be installed locally or uploaded and installed from the cloud both options can be done using application manager Application Manager allows you to perform numerous application management actions such as installation, launch, close your app, instrumentation, clearing data, uninstall the application, signing in and management of language files on your application as well. So once you have launched and installed your application, you can start creating your test. So basically next step is creating test. Test can be created with a recorder or with the help of highly visual object spy. Both methods can be used for native web and third party applications which we discussed earlier and i'll show you how to do that in the demo part don't worry about it moving on test can be executed from apm studio on local or remote devices you can execute test with or without test capabilities or run only specific commands and while you're performing the test you can see what is being done in the reflection on your device as well so that's the usual procedure between apm studio app and eclipse plugin there are slight variations but nothing major to worry about so basically you install your apm studio either as a desktop app or as a plugin in eclipse then you set up your visual interface as in all the features which are required to start testing 
After that, you connect your device. It can be either your local device using USB or you can use it from the cloud. A next step is to start installing applications that you want to perform testing on. Once you've launched and installed your applications, you can start developing your test. To develop your test, you have multiple options. You can use test recorder or an object spy, and then you can start executing your test. And once your tests are done, it will give you a detailed report and you can get a copy of it on APM Studio. So I hope the procedure is simple. If you are finding it complex, don't worry, you will get through it in the demo part of the session. So let's get started with the demo part of the session then. So here we go, guys. Let's first of all go and see how to install APM Studio. It's two models as an APM Studio device and APM Studio as a plugin in your Eclipse. So here we go. So guys, the first thing you do is search for APM Studio in your search tab and you can click on the first link that you find. So like I said earlier, it's a mobile automation tool which is developed by Xperi Test. So as you can see, that is the official link. You can click on it. So as soon as you click that, it'll take your page where you can download your APM Studio. First thing that you should know about APM Studio is it has two editions. One is Community Edition and another one is Enterprise Edition. Let's scroll down. You will see the differences. As you can see, there's a download option. You have tutorials, documentation as well. So Community Edition and Enterprise Edition installing is same. There's one extra step in Enterprise Edition. If you want to know more, you can refer to the documentation. So scroll down to the end of the page and you can see the differences between two editions. You have Community and Enterprise. Where Community Edition, a same account, two persons can use. As for Enterprise Edition, it depends on the license as in any number of people can use when they have license. And rest all the features which is on-click installation, object spy, test on local devices supported in both Community and Enterprise. But to test remote devices on SaaS Digital Assurance Lab or on-premise Digital Assurance Lab, it's not available in Community App. But earlier, as in initially when this was started, Community Edition had given access to SaaS Digital Assurance Lab, as in you can test on the devices which are available on SaaS Digital Assurance Lab, but not right now. So yeah, if you want to see how it actually works, you can download this here. And for 30 day trial, you can download the enterprise version. So anyway, I have downloaded APM Studio Community Edition. So click on that, it'll install. It's a normal installation process, the same you follow when you install any application. Click on next and finalize it. So it'll be installed as a desktop app on your computer. So I've been talking about Digital Assurance Lab since earlier. Basically, it is a productivity tool that allows you to manage all your testing assets in a centralized server. You can manage your devices, your applications, and the number of users who are accessing your Assurance Lab all at the same place using this Digital Assurance Lab. There's something called C-Test Cloud where you can get a lot of devices to test on. So click for C-Test. You need to create an account here. I've already created it. It's free. You can log in through your GitHub, Google, or Bitbucket account and click on login. This you can say is a dashboard where I can manage all my users, tools, devices, operating systems that I want to access and all that. And you have different devices based on your location. You can filter. So yeah, when you click on the username here, you have certain options which says the reporter to generate your reports or take a look at your reports and you have an access key here, which we will get into later than your account information and all that. So you have browsers and emulators. You have automation details, execution after execution. You have reports where you can view your reports and these are the devices that are currently available. So first of all, let's go and open our APM app. As you can see, it's installed as a desktop app here. So guys, when you open your APM Studio app, this is the page where you land on. So guys, this visual interface or studio as we call it guides you as you work on testing and provides immediate visual feedback so you can understand what you're doing and what are the errors and all that. So basically there are a few main areas in the studio or the visual interface, which I'll point out to you right now. So those main areas are first of all, you have device manager that is the highlighted part. In the device manager, you can connect to all the devices. You can connect to the remote devices which are available on Digital Assurance Lab. If you have an enterprise edition, that is. So right now I have a device which is connected. So you can connect your device using the USB which is available on your PC. So basically you can manage all your devices here. So when you connect your devices, you can see different commands here. This is to launch your device or open your device. This option is to add the device. And then you have to remove the device permanently, edit the device, and you can see a CTS cloud option. So you can access your cloud devices, which we just saw earlier in the cloud. 
if you have an enterprise edition only and next there is this application manager we discussed earlier so application manager allows you to perform numerous application management actions first of all such as installing launching and then closing an application clearing and uninstalling it installing the app in your mobile and all that by default apm studio for testing it provides you with two sample applications which is xperi test xperi bank and simple browser you can use them you have something called application capabilities as well when you connect to device you will get to know what that is so then there is your test area where you actually perform your test you give all the commands and all that you run tests and get your test reports and then there is your log or code area this test logs and code area usually contains code generated by apm studio based on the test commands that you might have given as you can see it supports different languages you have java c sharp python ruby so you can create your test code in any of those given languages well this is the log side you can view your test logs here and on the code side you can see the code that is generated based on the commands that you have given in your test area so yeah once you connect a device you can see a device reflection here as in the reflection of the device which you have connected to apm studio so basically it's a reflection of the local device which you connecting or the remote devices which you access from the cloud it only appears when you're connected to one so before earlier it wasn't there but right now it's there so you can control your device using mouse movements and keypad this device reflection is very important for you to create your robust and stable test execute and validate this test scripts using device reflection this is one special property which is not there in apm and that's how apm studio solves all the issues which we discussed earlier that you might face when you're using apm so yeah that's all about it well as for the other options you can see when i click on file you have create a new project you have an option to add and edit your device here as well and then create new test save test and all that different tools you have here for example you have encrypt password you have proxy configurations the network configurations that you can do and all you are talking about application manager as you can see this is install option then you have launch application close your application clear the application catch data uninstall it delete your application completely or you can import other applications which other than this xperi bank and the default applications provided by apm studio so yeah guys that's all about apm studio we won't be using this in today's session to perform the test because i'm sure most of you would be using eclipse so i'll show you how to install apm studio and integrate it with eclipse itself so that will become easy for you to use so guys first of all you need to have eclipse you can download the latest version so click on the eclipse I'm sure you can find out where you can install Eclipse, right? Install the latest version of it and open your Eclipse application. I have it here. It's the latest version. I just clicked on launch. So here we go, guys. My Eclipse homepage is open. As you can see, I'm already on the APM Studio homepage. But for you, this might not be the case because first of all, to install APM Studio, you'll have to go to Marketplace, search for it, and then install the plugin. In the tool menu, you can find Eclipse Marketplace. Click on that. So search for APM Studio and click on Go. Right now, it's not showing anything because I've already installed it. This is one way of installing it. There's another way, which is you can just download the APM Studio file, and you have an option again in the Help menu. You have Install New Software, and you can add and manage your software here. So since APM is also a software, you can add it here. So there are two ways. One is using a file, and another one is installing it via Marketplace. Those are the two options which are available for you. So as soon as you've done that, you land up on this page, and you can see an APM Studio in the menu bar, which says that your APM is properly installed. The first thing you need to do is configure that cloud configuration. So basically, you are trying to access the devices. If you want to access the remote devices which are in the cloud, you need to set up a connection for the cloud. So click on the cloud configuration option here. As you can see, the cloud login tab open. I'm already connected to it, so I'm going to disconnect. You have two options. You have Ctest. That's the account which I told you to create earlier. If you want to access the devices which are available on Ctest cloud, or if you have some other remote devices which you're accessing it from somewhere on your cloud, paste the URL of the cloud where you're accessing it. For now, I'm going to use the Ctest cloud. But before that, you can see an access key option here, right? That's what I was talking about earlier. So as you can see in the users option here, you have get access key. All you have to do is copy. Basically, access key is like a login and password or the credentials that you need to log in. Copy it and we're back here and let me paste it here and click on test. 
So before you actually close the dialog box, make sure the connection is successful. It says connection is successful and OK. So as soon as you click OK, you can see the list of cloud devices displaying here. If you want to make sure you're connected properly, click on cloud configuration again and you should see a disconnect option, which means that you're properly connected to your CTIS cloud account. So yeah, there you go. These are the devices which are available on CTIS cloud account on your account right now. So you need to select the device which you want to launch, which we'll do later. That's the first part. So what we did, we connected to the CTS cloud and which display the list of remote devices which are available on cloud. Next thing is you need applications to test on, right? So unlike APM Studio desktop app, you do not have default applications available here. You need to go and import it. You have an option which says create your own web application or upload it. I have uploaded an APK and IPA file of Eddy Bank, which is the default application which APM Studio actually uses it for the first time beginners to test applications if you want to know about. It's available on net. You can download the APK files and IPA for the ISO. Just click on the file and click open. That should do it and you can see your application here. You have different options here. Create, upload, refresh and you have for your Android device and your ISO device. So you have an option to install. You have launch option, uninstall and delete application. You have version option as well and you have something called instrument. Instrumentation is a process where the testing code is running in your application process. So you have an option to check it uncheck it. So you can enable instrumentation, not enable instrumentation. Now that we have our list of devices and application ready or next thing you need to do is launch a new project. Click on file and new project Java project. Let's say testing mobile app. Click on finish Do not create. So basically it'll ask you if you want to change the perspective. Just say no. You want to retain the APM studio perspective or mobile application perspective, not the Java perspective. In case if you have gone back to Java perspective, all you have to do is go for the windows here. You have perspective. Click on open perspective and click on other. And you have an option called mobile and you can click that and say open mobile perspective will be open. Now right click on it and you have configure option at the end. You need to configure it to mobile nature so you can select your project nature here. And I'm going to choose C test and J unit. For some reason I wasn't able to test using test NJ. Anyway you try it and let us know if you find any errors while doing it. Click on finish. You can see two files opening up one for the ISO device test. So like I said earlier, you do not have to write any source code here. You can actually use the code provided here. Then you have a sample code which is open up for your Android device. For today's session, we'll use Android device. Let's say Samsung Galaxy Note 5 in the cloud devices. I'm going to click on this and here you can see in the device option. It says opening device 0%. For now, let me reduce this. So as you can see you have your device open up here. You can perform different operations such as clicking on the screen or just sliding across swiping gestures and you can click on soft buttons such as home button here. Then you have back button recent apps and other thing you have override capabilities as well that I'll show you later. So you can connect to any of the devices of your choice. Now that a device is ready. Let's go and install an app. Eddybank already have app. All you have to do is click on this install here. So on the console you can see the progress. It says starting application. Application is being progress and successfully installed. Next thing to launch. All you have to do is drag this application and paste it here. So that's one way of installing it. As you can see install and launch are pasted in your test code as your commands. So there we go. Let me maximize the console thing. So yeah. Here you can see my console which is successfully installed every bank. Let's click on the more apps. So here you can see every bank app being launched so I can click on launch here. So my application has been successfully launched. It's as easy as that. All you have to do is draw your application and paste it in the setup code. So till now we have installed the plugin. Then we connected the device as in connected to our cloud test through which we are accessing the remote devices. Then I uploaded an application which was any bank sample application to work on then created a new project and I'm using Android device. So my device reflection is available here. Now to actually perform a test you are using something called dump or object spy. You can see dump UI here. So as soon as you click on that 
you can see one unsafe dump being created. So basically, it's a reflection of all the elements that are available on the page. So now if I click on one element that's not being highlighted in actual device reflection to enable that you need to create a dump properly and add them to your repository. Only then the test will be able to identify the elements on your device reflection for that here. You can see something called dump properties. So basically this is nothing but let me maximize it or let me just take it here. So when you click on one any of your elements, it highlights the XML tree the arrangement of all the properties here. For them to identify on the device reflection, you need to save them to your repository. First, let's say let's select username. As you can see, it displays the XML tree. Let's select on the elements which we want to add to our repository. Let's say text and ID. And you can see the plus option here, which says add to repository. Click on that. For the first time, you need to create a dump. For that, click on next. And this is the project, right? Test mobile app, create and dump name. Let's say login page or login details finish so yeah it should display the name of the element which is not there so let's just give a no name username and here on the left side you can see the element being added here as you can see here in the reflection it's being added to the repository yeah so you can see username here similarly password let's say text and id and add login details let's say password and click on okay similarly let's do this for the login as well you have ID and add to repository login. Okay, so you can see all my elements have been added to repository. So now I need to create an XPath expression which is required to identify the elements, right? All you have to do is click on this dialog box will open up in the attributes. You select the elements which want to be displayed in that XPath and click. As you can see, the XPath expression is here and click on OK. Same goes for the password. Let's say I need text and ID and click on OK. Similarly, for the login, text and ID, which are there already, and OK. So, yeah, we have added elements which we want to test for our uh, in our repository. In the repository, when you click and right click and click on identify, you can see in the device reflection that the element is being highlighted. It means it's working properly. Similarly, password is being highlighted. And same goes for the login identify, it's being highlighted. So that's all. So we have captured the page and extracted few elements and the elements are being identified properly right now. Now we'll have to perform the test for that. Let's close this window. We need this. Let's close this dumb properties window for now. Android test. Here you can see the public wide test function there. You need to add the things which are need to be performed in the test, right? So first the username is not a click option. I want to enter the test, right? So yeah, that's the thing you want to use. It says send text. This is the click. Then this is for the instrumented. And this is for the web application or the web properties. So here, let me just give us company the sample data. Next same goes for the password. We need to enter the data. So yeah, login details. And here, as you can see, I've placed the click property of it. So it's not showing anything. Let me just remove it and place this send text now you can see a quotation asking for us to enter the sample data company enter i need to add the third element which is our login button which is a clickable option so click login details as the repo element and click so there we go our test is ready all we're doing is it has to detect the username ask for us to enter password as well and login details as for the sample data i've given it as company as you can see and yeah, that's all. Save the test. And since you have made changes to the capabilities or the elements here, now click on this overwrite capabilities. Next thing you need to execute your test. Click on this, right click, and you have run as JUnit test. Okay, the test is being run right now. Give me a minute. Let's show it to you guys. Let me open the console so you can see what is happening in the test. And you can also see the changes that's being happening here. So guys, you can see that my test has run very successfully. It says the green color indicates that's it successful and you have all the steps indicating what all happened. It's installed, launched, then it sent text company to the username and then similarly password is also company and then clicked on the login button and you are being moved to the next page, next main page, which is enter your balance. Let me lower this. So as you can see, your balance is 
so and so dollars and you have successfully logged in and moved on to the next main page so this easy it is to use appium studio to perform test so this is the very basic test which i've done for you people to understand it very easily so this way you can add more number of elements and you can perform the next test and you can make your test more and more complex and all that since we have landed in the next page let's add few more elements to perform this test again from the beginning i'm going to add one more page so yeah here we are i'm going to create one more dump page click on this dump ui you can see one more dump being created and right now if i click on the elements it's not being highlighted as you can see in the device reflection so again i'll have to add them in the dump properties so eric bank it's just the display let's just ignore it make payment i don't want to hit that let's say display balance it's a h1 header and the balance click on dump we create new dump file let's say and add it to testing map next main page finish h1 let's say okay let's just retain h1 and click on okay i'm going to add log out as well text and id click on this log out okay so i have one more dump being created here let's just add them at the export so that we can access the elements click on okay and log out as well it's the selector already this is the export for the log out button and okay and so let me test yeah let me this a little bigger so here we go let me right click on it and identify so you can see the balance is being identified similarly the log out and log out so basically now if i perform the test what should happen is application should install launch it and then enter the login page details which is company company so basically what this test does is first is install the application then it launches it which takes us to the login page enters the login details which is company company because that's what we have provided in the test file right and then you will be landed in the main page where it checks for the balance and log out, logs out that should happen if the test runs successfully here first part was successful now let's try for this so for right now i don't need dump properties let's just close this and minimize this so that we can view what the test code here here we go and here i need to add two more properties right so enter enter because i have two more to add the first one is our login data it's just display so as you can see it says the web element no action on it no click option or no send text anything all you have to do is drag and place it here and it's just verify element found or not the next element is log out it's a click option so this and here it says the click verify click and all that details is done now let me save the test override the capabilities so now if i right click on this and run the test i hope you can see here the test is being run started test was successful but that's not showed in the device reflection let's try it again so sorry about earlier guys there was some error anyway i'll just redo the test again and let's see if we get results this time so here we are and yeah i've loaded two pages and i have copy pasted the elements here five elements here we go let's just save the test and rerun the test again So as you can see this test has started execution whatever it is happening that should be reflected on your device reflection you can see that there so right now it says installing application and next step is launching application and next is login details login and you land up in the main page you view a balance and then click on log out you'll be out of the main page so as you can see that was successful so this way you can keep on testing all the pages or all the website or applications which you have installed on your mobile device well this was just a basic example you go ahead and try out other stuff before we wrap it out let's just go through what we did today again as in let me summarize what we did from the beginning so what we did was the first thing we tried to connect to apm studio before that we tried to install apm studio like i said there are two ways here First of all you can go to marketplace in the help tool here and click on marketplace and you can install apm studio as a plugin another way is you can again go to help and there you can click on install new software and install it by uploading a file so there are two ways of doing it well in this session we try to install apm studio as plugin in our eclipse after we did that like i said you can connect to any remote device or local device 
Suppose if you want to connect it to your mobile, you can do it using USB drive. But if you want to connect to remote devices, other kind of devices which are available, then you can go to CTS Cloud. I showed you how to log in, create an account, log in, get your access key. And when you click on this, it'll show you four options. Click on cloud configuration and there copy paste your key and click on connect. Here you can see the list of devices which are available in the cloud. So connect to the device of your choice, whichever you want to test. It could be iPhone or it could be your Android. And once you do that, your next step is to create a new program. Before that, you can go ahead and install an application. So you get APK files to install an Android and other kind of files for your ISO device. So make sure to install the file and upload it. Suppose if you want to create a new application, you have an option as well. It says create a web app here and you have an option to upload. Once it's done, make sure you've checked the instrument. It's an optional by the way, but if you want to make sure your application is working properly and all the elements have been instrumented during the execution of the test, then make sure you checklist this. Otherwise you can disable it. Then we install our application. Next step is to create a project, open new project and make sure you have your project opened up in mobile perspective. When you do that, you will have two programs opening, which will be Android and ISO. So based on the device that you're checking, you can start creating the commands or the test file. So the next step is to connect to the device of your choice and then install application. You have install option here. Once you have installed it, you can launch it. And another way of installing it easy way is to just click and drag the application name and paste it in your code here. And once you're done that, you can see that application has been installed and launched. And after that, we pick up each page. We click on elements and check if you are able to reach the elements. If you are successfully able to reach the elements, it means that our test is working properly. So we move on to the next step in the test, which is to see if the elements are still working properly and all the actual process is going on properly. So yeah, I have captured two pages. One is login page and once you've tested with the login page, you go for the main page capture that as well. For that, you can just click on the dump window here and create a dump file. To highlight the elements, you'll have to create an XPath for each of your element. For that, again, you go to dump properties and there you save it in the dump which you created earlier and all that. And once you've done that, you just click and draw password. For password, you can use send text. For logout, you can use click. And as for the balance, it's just a web element. So you have wait for the element or highlight the element option. You can put that. Or in some other applications, you will get an option like the globe or something, which says it's a web element. So it just have to be displayed. So you can just drag it and paste it away here and done. So after that, we read on the test. As you can see, it ran successfully. And in the device reflection, you saw all the steps which are taking place in the test. So yeah, that's all about it. And before we wrap up, there's one more thing. There's something called story. Suppose there are people who doesn't know actually understand what's going on here. So there's something called story here. So basically when you place your cursor on any line of the code, it displays you what is actually going on there. Suppose let's say I have placed the cursor here. So as you can see, it's displaying the previous step, the after step and the current step that you are placing the cursor on. Supposedly that's your password step. So as you can see, the password element is being highlighted and the previous step is username where you enter username and the last step is login. So that's how you do it. Let's say I'm highlighting the web element here. I place it. So as you can see, it's in the main page and highlighting the element. So here we go. Just like that, you have something called story. So basically here you can see if you're not good at programming and if you're still not understanding what's happening in the test, you can see actually what is happening here via a visual format. So yeah, that's all about it guys. I hope you've understood what we did today, but let me tell you again. These were just the basic tests. I just want you guys to understand what APM studio is and how to use it. So I've used the basic of the program here. So you go ahead and try out new programs and start testing as soon as possible so that you can get familiarized with it. So yeah guys here we are at the end of the session. I hope you've understood what we've learned today during any stage of the demo. If you have any doubt during installation or any other step, you can just comment it in the comment session or post your doubt there and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Meet you in the next session. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.